Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 1, Section 3, Algebraic Expressions. Uh, a couple of different objectives. We want to be able to evaluate algebraic expressions and to simplify algebraic expressions. We'll begin with a multiple choice question trying to determine which uh, algebraic expression models the word phrase 7 fewer than a number t. So uh, it can be a little tricky but we want 7 less than t, so that would actually be t minus 7. So that would be 7 less than the number t, so that's how we figure that out. There's some other confusing ones there, so like the 7 minus t, uh, some might consider that to be uh, the correct choice, but again it's 7 fewer than the number t would be t minus 7. Uh, another example, the same type of question, which algebraic expression models the word phrase two times the sum of A and B. So two times the sum of A and B. So we've got the sum of A and B multiplied by two. So that would be uh, option H, two, and then the quantity A plus B. Here we're going to take a look at uh, using a process to model a word problem. Um, so we want to identify the actions that suggest operations define one or more variables to represent the unknowns and represent the actions using the variables and the op operations. Um, so the word problem in this case, you start with $20 and save 6 each week. What expression models the total amount that you save? So when relating things, what I like to do is just kind of set them up We've got the total amount saved. Well, that's going to equal the starting amount. Starting money, we'll say. And we're going to add to that the total saved um, by adding each week. So that would end up being uh, money per week multiplied by the number of weeks I'm kind of running out of room there, so multiply by number of weeks and then we define uh, the different pieces that we have so the amount that we saved uh, we don't know exactly what that is, I'm just going to call that T and the starting money we know was $20. The money per week we know is 6 and we don't know the number of weeks. Uh, now I'm actually going to end up with an equation here because I'm going to have t equals 20 plus 6 times w. Um, if I were to just get rid of the t it would just be the expression 20 plus 6w and of course you could write that as 6w plus 20 as well. But that, I find that's a good way to lay out what we have. Uh, I like the different pieces that we can do here with the total amount saved, the starting money, and how that equals the money per week times the number of weeks. And then you go through and you can fill in um, just what each of those equals. So here's another example the same thing. We've got the word problem. Uh, you had $150, but you were spending $2 each day. What algebraic expression models the situation? So we've got the uh, similar situation where we've got the starting money. And we're going to be subtracting the money spent per day multiplied by the number of days. And so then we can define each of those pieces. So the starting money was 150. The money per day was 2. Number of days we don't know, so I'm going to call that D. So actually putting that together with the operations, 150 minus 2D would represent, uh, would be the expression to model that situation. Uh, when evaluating an algebraic expression, what we do is we substitute a number for each variable in the expression and then simplify using order of operations. Uh, so starting with uh, this one here, they tell us A is going to be negative 4 and B will be 5. So we go 7, and then instead of A we put negative 4. And instead of B we put 5. 
and we evaluate based on order of operations. So order of operations has to do uh, parentheses first. So actually get a zero there. The parentheses there around the five are just showing that that's multiplication. We can actually do both those multiplications at the same time. We end up with zero plus fifteen minus eight. So really just fifteen minus eight. And we come up with seven. So using order of operations, we'll always come up with that same value. Another example, they give us x is 1 and y is 1 half. So we get 1 half plus, now we've got to be careful when we plug the 1 half in for the y. We really need parentheses to show that we're squaring the entire 1 half. Uh, we would do the exponents first. So 1 half plus squaring 1 half gives 1 fourth. Um, Adding fractions, hopefully you know what this one is, one-half plus one-fourth. If you need to, you can make it so they have a common denominator. Multiply one-half by two over two. Add the fourth, we get a total of three-fourths. So again, also some fraction work there, which is always good. Uh, same sort of question. Um, we've got the expression. We want to plug in the values for x and for y. So we plug in... The 6 for the x. Oops, didn't want a y there. And then the negative 3 for the y. So we work inside the parentheses first. Um, and inside the parentheses, we have a couple of exponents, so we can do those at the same time. So we'd square the 6 and get 36, square the negative 3 and get a positive 9. Just so gonna have to be careful there. Still need to work inside the parentheses. Taking 9 away from 36 gives us 27. Um, I would work on top of the fraction bar first. We get 54 over, oops, not 54 over 27, 54 over 3. And then we divide the 54 by 3, and we get 18. Just again, careful work with order of operations it can get us to the correct answer. Um, so here we're going to talk about terms. Um, terms can be a number, a variable, or the product of a number, and one or more variables. Uh, coefficient is the numeric factor for a term, and a constant term is a term with no variables. Uh, this expression shown here has three terms, the negative 4ax, the 7w, and the negative 6. Negative 6 is a constant term, it has no variable part. For the 7w, the 7 is the coefficient, and for the negative 4ax, the negative 4 is the coefficient. When we have like terms, we can combine them. So in this case, we've got the 3x squared and the 5x squared. Well, that would be 8x squared. And we've got 9y cubed z and 4y cubed z. Of course, subtracting the 4 gives us 5y cubed z. And then we have a plus 2yz. Um, when you combine like terms, you just add or subtract their coefficients uh, as given by the operations uh, that we have. Here's just a list of properties for simplifying algebraic expressions. If you want to pause and take a look at that, go right ahead. Here we're going to uh, combine like terms in order to simplify each expression. Uh, so let's see, we've got an x squared here and another x squared there, so 7 x squared minus 4x squared. It can be helpful to move like terms so that they are next to each other. Uh, so then we can see the x squareds are alike. We would subtract the 4 from the 7 and get 3x squared. The y squareds are alike. We would add the 2 and 3 to get 5y squared. Now with uh, example b here, we'd have to distribute the negative through the parentheses. So negative 3k minus m plus, and then we would distribute the 2 through, 2k minus 8m. And now we can combine the k's, negative 3k plus 2k, minus an m minus an 8m. So we actually end up with a negative 1k, so negative k, and a minus 9m. Uh, same sort of problems, combining like terms. And again, you don't have to move them around. You might just look at it and say, okay, I've got a negative 4j squared and a j squared. That's negative 3j squared um, uh, minus 7k and a plus 5j. So those two aren't like terms. And of course, the j squared and the j can't be combined. 
Here we have to do a little distributing, so minus 8a minus 3b. Uh, distribute the 10 as well, so plus 20a minus 50b. Um, so we can combine the a's, we get 12a, and combine the b's, negative 53b. And here's uh, some problems for you to uh, try and give a shot. Hopefully uh, you find that they make sense. And thanks for watching.